Welcome to Lesson 4 of Unit 4 on Scatter Plots and Trend Lines. In this lesson, we will be creating and interpreting scatter plots, and we will be using trend, trend lines to make predictions. So first of all, we have some vocabulary that we need to discuss. And a couple of words here. A scatter plot is just a discrete graph, and it relates two sets of data. A trend line is a line, and it's a line that's on a scatter plot, and it shows the relationship between those two sets of data. A correlation is a measure of the strength and the direction of the relationship between the two data sets. So scatter plots, trend lines, and correlations. So let's take a look at some practice problems to see what we can do with scatter plots and trend lines. So in this first problem, it says the table shows the number of species added to the list of endangered and threatened species in the United States during the given years. Graph a scatter plot using the, da the given data. So the first thing, if you're given a table of data, the first thing you want to do is determine which is the dependent and the independent variable. And almost always time will be an independent variable. It will go on the x-axis, and so that's what we've done here. We have our years along the x-axis and our number of species along the y-axis. And the x value represents the calendar year, and the y value represents the number of species that have been added. So we want to go ahead and graph this data. So now would be a good time to pause the video and go ahead and graph each of those points. So you'll have seven data points. And I've already done that for you here, so that's what your data should look like. The point 2000, 39 tells you that in the year 2000, the list of endangered species increased by 39 species. So this is called a scatter plot. It's just simply uh, some data points based on some kind of data that we're given. We never connect the data points. It's a discrete graph, so it's just independent values. There are three types of correlations that you will see. And the first correlation is a positive correlation. And that happens when both set of data values are increasing. So as we increase the y value, the corresponding, or excuse me, as we increase the x value, the corresponding y value also is increasing. So these would have the trend line that would be drawn in here would have a positive slope. And then we have a negative correlation one set of data values increases as the other set decreases. So as we go along here, our x values are getting bigger, but our y values are getting smaller. So that's a negative correlation. And then this one, we just kind of have dots all over the place. That's called no correlation. And that's when there is not necessarily any relationship that we can draw between the data sets. They don't follow any pattern. So we want to be able to describe the correlation between the variables. So here we have TV watching and test scores. So what kind of a relationship does it look like here? As you watch more TV, your test scores seem to go down. So as one is increasing, the other is decreasing. So that looks to me like it is a negative correlation. And then letter B says the number of pets a person owns and the number of books that that person read last year. What kind of a correlation do you think that would be? Well, I don't think there'd be any relationship. I think if we were to get data on that, there would be no correlation. So those are two examples of describing the type of correlation. There are two on the right-hand side, letter C and D, that you can do on your own and bring your answers to class. Here's another example. It says the scatter plot below shows a relationship between the total amount of money collected at a fundraiser and the total number of rolls of wrapping paper sold. So based on the relationship, predict how much money will be collected when 175 rolls have been sold. So the first thing we want to do is we want to be able to draw a line that has about the same number of points above and below the line that we're going to draw. This is our trend line. Your line may or may not go through the data points. So here is um, an example of the trend line that we might draw. Okay, So once we have the trend line, um, we want to find the point 
175 rolls. So find the point on the line where the x value is 175, and that's this dotted green line. So we follow that all the way up to our graph, and then follow it to the left, and it says that the output for that input value is about 1,200. So I have one more question for you here. Using this um, table of values, or this graph of data, how many rolls need to be sold to raise $500? So see if you can interpret that and bring that answer to class. That'll do it for scatter plots and trend lines. See you next time.